Really quick before we get started, um, Martin, let me start with you. You're a member of NBER, and they said today that it is too early to call an end to the recession, but a lot of private economists think that it ended um, in June or July of last year. Do you agree with that? Uh, I agree with the NBER statement that we still don't have enough data uh, to be sure either about the date or, in my judgment, about whether we are definitely out of uh, recession. Oh, does that mean you don't think we are out of recession yet? I think there's a, a risk, uh, less of a risk than a month ago, but nevertheless a risk that this economy could turn back down again. And if it did that sometime soon, I don't think we'd want to call the increase that we've seen in the last six months uh, a recovery. I think we'd want to say, that that was just a temporary rise in what was otherwise a longer economic downturn. All right, and so, uh, Robert Reich, uh, you heard Marty Feldstein on that. You're pessimistic on the jobs market in your op-ed piece in the paper this morning. Wouldn't, therefore, a value-added tax be an absolute bone crusher to this economy? Uh, Larry, I'm not in favor of a value-added tax for two reasons. Uh, number one, I think that uh, any tax that hides itself and a value-added tax would be a hidden tax because most of it would be on every stage of production up to uh, consumer goods, and that means consumers would not really know how much they were paying. Any tax that hides itself is not a good tax. Uh, it's not a democratically accountable tax. Uh, and secondly, I worry that a value-added tax, because it is a kind of super sales tax, is a regressive tax. Uh, it uh, does not take a bigger bite out of the incomes of the wealthy than it does out of the incomes of the poor, and therefore it's a step backwards toward greater tax regressivity, as is every sales tax. Marty, do you agree with that? Uh, I do, uh, and I think one thing that reinforces it is that about half of all Americans who file tax returns don't pay any tax. Right but they would pay a value-added tax every time they bought something. But gentlemen, I mean, we have to come up with half a trillion dollars per year in order to keep up with spending, in order to keep GDP, uh, uh, the deficit at 3% of GDP, that's according to the Tax Policy Center. Uh, how are we going to do it? I mean, if we just levy taxes on people that make more than $200,000 a year, we're going to have to take the top level to 76%, which I don't think is very realistic. Well, Isn't as, everybody going to have to pay more taxes? As you said, in order to keep up with the growth of spending, hmm. well, maybe we could slow the growth of spending. No. That's a crazy idea. Oh. And the other, the other thing that uh, <laughs> I think we should do is to uh, limit the uh, uh, tax cuts that the president has promised for everybody below the top two brackets. Really? I thought, Marty, you wanted to extend the tax cuts because it hits on saving and investment. Capital gains, the top earners, they do most of the saving and investment. I'm surprised if to hear I you say do, this. No, but, but uh, uh, Larry, if I could extend it at the top end, I would be in favor of doing that. But I would say that we don't want to have a 100% reduction in the taxes as proposed by the administration for everybody under two hundred thousand dollars that would cost more than two trillion dollars over the next ten years so fixing that would m make us uh, would take us a long way towards dealing with the accumulated debt so robert rice and let me say that i i, I disagree uh, somewhat with professor feldstein on this uh, it seems to me that we can raise marginal income taxes on the top somewhat uh, now, we can't raise it to 75%, uh, although let's remember under Dwight Eisenhower, who nobody accused of being a radical, it was 91%, the top marginal tax rate. The effective rate was closer to 60%. Nevertheless, uh, I think you could raise it somewhat. Uh, but uh, also, I think it's possible if we focus on uh, the part of domestic discretionary that is really public investment, uh, that is uh, infrastructure, education, and so forth, separate that out. Uh, we don't right now have a separate uh, capital account or investment account in the federal budget uh, uh, accounts uh, and focus on overall the debt versus GDP ratio. Uh, not get fixated on these absolute numbers, but look at the ratio of debt to GDP. Why don't we and just get go that GDP and uh, get that GDP number up? Uh, well, we're not going to get rapid it. economic growth. We're not going to get it up uh, by raising I, tax rates, my friend. That's the well, thing. No, I, I agree. I, the I, denominator I, is very important. But look, well, you, know, you mentioned, Larry, but you I mentioned 91%. Uh, let me go to JFK. 
first supply sider in the post-war who took the top rate down from 91 to 70 and that was a huge catalyst for the boom in the 1960s which now, by Larry, the way are you suggesting the that you are endorsing wait a minute larry kudlow are you endorsing 70 percent marginal tax rate no i'm endorsing because i am shocked i'm endorsing I am shocked the drop at your radicalism i'm endorsing the drop as you well know from 91 to 70 that was the right direction kennedy was my hero reagan took it from 70 to 50 and then all the way to 28. Why don't we just cut spending? For example, the American Enterprise Institute just came out with a plan, a 15% reduction in the excessive uh, government worker salaries and pensions would save about $40 billion a well, wait year. A Let, uh, Why don't we Larry, go to that look, kind of I, approach you, instead of more taxation? You and I have talked about this before, and I, I want to get Professor Feldstein's read on this as well, but but uh, the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest issues, the biggest uh, spending uh, in the federal budget is obviously Medicare, Medicaid, also Social Security, and defense. Uh, everything else, domestic discretionary, is really very, very small. Uh, we do have to worry well, about entitlement reform, particularly Medicare, uh, but uh, I wouldn't mind uh, some major trimming of the defense expenditures in years to come. Well, I, all right, Marty, what's your take on the spending Last side? Word. You know, on the spending side, the big issues, uh, as uh, Professor Reich has said, are Social Security and Medicare, and they're going to get to be bigger and bigger. And what we need to do is to stop financing those 100% by taxes. What we need to do is to move to a mixed system in which we combine some tax finance in order to give it that kind of stability with an investment-based part. And if we do that, then we don't have to raise taxes in the same way. And I think that's the direction that we should be going.